everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm, and I am hopping on today again in my office on a very dreary Thursday afternoon in Michigan. Um, I wanted to hop on and show you some things I've been working on today. I, first of all, for those new here, um, welcome. I am a spinner, knitter, crocheter. Um, I dye yarn sometimes. I dabble in a lot of fiber arts, so that's who I am. Um, my husband and I live on a five-acre farm in northern mid-Michigan, and right now we have chickens, and I raise Angora rabbits. I raise French, English, and German Angora rabbits. Um, so that's who I am. I have been doing this for nearly 20, 20 years now. Um, we had a spell um, for about six years where we lived in a lake house here um, with a very small area and I only had my rabbits um, and now we have moved in the last year to acreage and I am slowly growing this back up again so I'm really excited about that uh, hopefully coming this spring we will have some new additions to our farm we'll see what the spring brings but that's my plans right now um, but let's get on with this video if some of you have seen that I am in the midst of um, cleaning out my office. This is my little office and I am going to do a video tour of my little office, which will last about five minutes because it is really little, but I'm thankful for it. Uh, it is a walk-in closet in our bedroom and I've added a shelf here and I've got a desk coming this afternoon, so I'll probably video that. Um, but as I was cleaning, I ran across a bag of um, locks that I had purchased at a local fiber farm. I am very fortunate that I live in an area where there are several, quite a few of us that spin, raise animals, um, do all the fiber things. And so I purchased this from one of the small Saturday farm gatherings that they had. Um, these are dyed locks and I try, I'm trying to remember, I, I think, I'm not positive on this, but I think that they are um, Angora goat, um, but the receipt just said dyed locks, so I'm not sure what they are, but this is what they look like. Um, I saved a few out from what I've been working on, and this is just a handful of them. I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do with these to use them. There are a couple different ways to go about doing this, um, <clears throat> so let's jump in. The first way, which I am not going to um, completely show you today, I am going to shift my camera down here in just a minute, but there is um, a thing called um, tail spinning. Uh, you can tail spin long locks, and essentially what you're doing as you're plying your yarn, you are just attaching... Um, and this isn't exactly how it works, but you are attaching your lock to um, your your bobbit, your fiber that you're using. Um, and then you spin this out and your yarn will be very much considered an art yarn because your tails um, will be spun into the yarn. That's one way to do it. Um, the second way is to put these into bats, which I have been working on today. Uh, this afternoon and I have um, I do have a drum carter I have a I think it's a brother drum carter um, but I also have this blending board I got to clean it off um, that I use and I honestly have not pulled it out in over a year um, we've been here almost a year and I have not pulled it out since we've been here so I know it's been a while and there is a bit of a learning curve on it um, there are a couple ways you can do bats with this um, you can make and again, remember, I have not had this out in a while, so my bats, my final bat is very pretty, but my other two that I worked on this afternoon are a little bit um, not as neat as I'd like them to be. They're still going to work, and I'll show you how I would spin off from this. You can make mini bats on the, um, the blending board, and those essentially are just in I just did a video I did a reel on YouTube that you can go watch me doing some of this but essentially you get this long and remember this is not this should all be neatly in a um, bat here and then these are the ones that you see kind of like this when they're much neater 
and these you would just simply spin out of the center pull of this and so you can see I've got the locks in here this is a bat full of angora um, alpaca and pygora pygora goat um, so it is very very soft I wish I wish people could feel how soft these are and the locks are really soft too so that's the first bat you can do the other bat um, you can do more of a regular bat that you would get off a drum carter a longer piece of um, bat and so I did two of those this was the first one I did um, you could see the locks blended in there that one wasn't as neat as I wanted it. But finally, on the third try, I got a very neat bat. Um, these are the ones that you see typically um, that you would order off, like I said, a drum carter. You can do these on the blending boards. And so this is just a, the same mix. Um, and essentially what you're going to do with this, let me show you on the ugly one. <laughs> You're just going to open it up and it's just a long strip of, not a long strip, but it's just a strip of fiber. And this is the thing that's falling apart is this one side here. So that's what it looks like. And you can see the locks in the middle here. And again, this is the same fiber. And so what you're going to do with these, um, I'm going to shift my camera down and I'm going to show you how you can spin locks like this or how you're going to spin off these bats. So let me shift it real quick. Okay, I've got my Spin Illusion Monarch wheel set here. And I need to figure out, I've got a squeak in it today because I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, almost every day. So I need to figure out what the squeak is. But um, I love this wheel, uh, Spin Illusion. I started on an Ashford and I loved my Ashford for many, many years. And then I love the versatility of these spin illusion wheels. Um, I love what you can do on them. I love that I can have a wheel that does art yarn and regular yarn all in one thing. These are from a veteran owned USA made company, which I love even more because I think that's going to become even more important. Um, coming up here in the future. I think that's going to be something we're going to have to focus on more and more. So spin illusion wheels, I love. And again, this is the Monarch wheel. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you how, let me make sure, yep, you can see me. Essentially what you do to spin these is you can do it a couple different ways. Um, you kind of find an end and Again, this is probably going to end up being more of an art yarn. Um, and what I do is just get it started and then I pull. And you hate to ruin the locks, but but this is really pretty too. We got a little piece of hay in there. I, so some, I remember getting fiber years ago when I first started this and it had hay in it. And I'm like, well, that's gross. But I've come to love getting hay even um, in the stuff I buy because you know that this is farm raised, hand done, um, straight from the animals. And this has all been cleaned and washed and dyed. But sometimes the little vegetable matter still gets caught up in there. So you can do it like this and just make, this is going to be a real textured yarn. There's going to be lots of pieces and parts to it. I got another little piece of hay right there. Um, so you can do it that way. And I just kind of keep pulling out each uh, lock as I go along and separate it here and there and get the twist where I want it. And so that's how I do that. The other way to do these is to um, pull them apart. So a lot of times what people will do will just be pull these apart just like that and then spin them from there. And the, it's a little bit time consuming. Um, you can do, this isn't so much of an art yarn if you don't want it to be. You can create textured yarn this way too. Uh, there's, there's different ways to do it. Um, I am a firm believer that 
when you're doing fiber arts, it is an art form. And I've never held to that, um, that everybody's going to spin the same. I don't think that. I don't believe that. I think everybody has a different technique. Everybody likes different types of yarns, different looks. So I'm a firm believer in letting, letting people spin what they want to spin. So this is the first bat that I did, the longer one. Um, and essentially, you're going to just spin out of the center of this. And I'm going to grab it and get it started on my leader. And there's some of that vegetable matter I talked about. I'm just going to pull that out. And then I'm just going to spin. And even this, um, this one that didn't turn out real clean and sharp like I would want it, is still simple to spin from. You're just drafting your fibers how and where you want them. And let me get through some of this pygora and alpaca here. And I will probably end up spinning all of this this afternoon um, just like this. And then you get, I don't know if you could see, you get the the lock starting to come through here. And that's all I'm going to do is just sit and spin this. And probably what I'll end up doing is spinning it um, and then doing my center pull bobbin. Uh, sorry, center pull ball. And I will spin it back on itself. That's what I've been doing a lot lately with my yarns. And I think I have a video about that um, here if you look how to spin from a center pull ball. So that's that one. And again, this is really simple. It's just coming from the center of the bat here. Now these bigger ones, you can handle these a couple different ways. Um, typically what I like to do is just simply pull it apart. So I'm going to pull pull off a side of it and just spin from that. That's another thing I like about the Spinolution wheels. There's no orifice or anything, no hooks. It just lays across the pins here and into the big hook. And that's how you get started. And then this is just drafted from my hand. Um, I have the bulk of the yarn in my left hand. I am drafting with my right hand. Can't remember if that's going to be flip-flopped on the video, but that's how I do mine. And I'm, I'm not going to be as consistent with this yarn because it is going to be more of a fun yarn. Um, as I spin. So there might be some thicker pieces Then I love spinning art yarn. I just think it's, um, it's very relaxing not to have to worry about what you're spinning and have beautiful yarn come out. And then we've got a lock here. I'm going to kind of work through it and separate it and maybe make the little, some bulbs and bumps there. And then I just pick up on my Angora and Pygora and Alpaca blend there. So my my Alpaca yarn or my Alpaca fiber and my Pygora fiber are from our animals and I had two Alpacas that were um, this color. Um, not a pure white but close and then I had six Pygora goats and they were a bit of a range of colors from uh, caramel color to um, this cream color and when I had them processed um, I took them to a processing place here in Michigan I just had them blend it all together into a cloud so this is a mix of all of my pygora goats that I used to have um, so they're about the same color actually as what my alpacas were when you blend it all together there's another lock there I'm just going to take it and I'm going to draft it and you're going to get some pretty bumps and you can see, I don't know if you can see, yeah, it is hard to see. I apologize, um, but you can kind of tell that 
this isn't really consistent yarn because I am working towards doing more of an art type yarn. Um, this won't be real chunky though. Uh, so this would make a beautiful scarf or a shawl. Um, it would work for a hat. So yeah, just some ins and outs of spinning from bats and locks. So I hope <laughs> I hope that you found this video helpful um, and I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comment section. And um, if you like this video, please click the like button. And if you don't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. Um, if you have any ideas for videos you would like, please let me know. I have a couple um, lined up coming up here in the next week or so that I have for people that wanted done last year and I never got to them. So um, I am on all the socials at Tailspin Farm. I am mainly active on Instagram. That's where you'll find me most days. Um, so thank you for stopping by and I hope you're creating something today. Bye. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter. I go without knowing